So today we've got a full schedule for you. Um, we're going to give you an intro to Common Room, just understanding where we fit in the community ecosystem. We're going to go over a quick glimpse into the product itself. And then we're going to have kind of a fireside chat with Matthew Munger from Webflow, where we'll talk about their experience in community and using Common Room. Here are the stars for today. Uh, myself, I've been at Common Room uh, working with customers since pretty much the early days um, when we we're really trying to understand what are the biggest challenges community leaders face and developer relations professionals, and how can we help them with a tool that not only helps the day to day, but also in communicating the value to the rest of the business. Um, now, Hadan Zhang, one of our leaders in product management, is going to take us through the product itself. I'm a little jealous. I lost in Rochambeau, and now she gets to demo today. And then finally, the star of the show, Matthew Munger. He's a senior product expert at Webflow, and he's going to talk about the journey of community at Webflow and how Common Room has helped them in being able to convey the value and bring more stakeholders into operating around and within community um, to better perform their own functions. So we're all here today because your organizations are invested heavily in community. Um, you're sitting here because you most likely have a role within community directly. And the thing is about it is those executives that have decided to deliver resources and provide resources for you to deliver on the company goals around community, now they kind of want to know, like, what is the impact it's having? Um, can you give us proof points? Can you quantify the value that community is delivering to the company? The challenge is most of these executives don't really know what's going on in community today. I was just reading from Gartner how about two thirds of midsize and above digital businesses, so SaaS businesses, have communities. This means that you're com competing for the engagement, for the clicks, the interactions across your competitors, across other digital businesses, across many, many other communities. And to make matters worse, community itself and leading a community has actually gotten even more challenging than it was, say, 10 years ago, where your community just resided, say, in your Q&A or your support forums. Today, when you look at community, it exists across a wide swath of places, both digital and IRL or in real life. For instance, if you look across uh, the landscape today, you're probably start starting to monitor like Twitter because there's product appreciation Sometimes it's not appreciation and sentiment um, varies wildly in that channel. Then you, if you're in a, a more technical centric community, you're looking at GitHub, you're staying on top of issues, pull requests, comments, and the users that are filing those and prioritizing your engagement um, based on what's going on there. Now, many of you also have forums still because that's a great way for knowledge transfer and the moderator position is something that is a program in itself that helps to bring people closer to your company and to distribute knowledge across your users. Then you'll see that folks are also going to be sharing feature requests in Discord or Slack. You're also going to see stuff like live meetups, um, although we're seeing other platforms as well. And then finally, where it's getting really, really exciting is as you're thinking about community, um, the engagement in the community, how's that reflective of what people are doing in the product themselves, if you're a product-centric community or you sell some sort of products? And so being able to tie all these data sources together um, becomes really, really challenging, but it provides you all the insights to prioritize the members you engage with, the programs you deliver, and the value you can deliver to the organization. Now, as you're thinking about this wide swath of environments that your community now um, contains, you still have all the same activities and, um, and tasks that you had previously. So you're still having to deal with, um, it's interesting, I was just thinking about uh, one of the communities I worked with this morning, they had 15,000 activities in their community um, just in the last month. If you're on a team that say maybe has three community professionals on it, there's no way you can filter through all that activity. Then if you want to think about delivering programs, um, measuring and reporting up the growth and engagement of your community, um, helping out your product teams, your sales teams, really what this has become is a unsustainable profession because of the reactive nature of having to be in all places at once. If you're to layer that on, on building a community, there's typically three different stages that we see communities go through. 
Um, many of the companies that we're working with today, they're past the seeding your community. So they're not just measuring, say, engagement and growth and trying to drive like more and more folks into a single channel within their community, usually they're moving up into this facilitating growth phase, um, working from home. And so facilitating growth is really once you start to see those hand raisers and you start to deliver programs around community. Um, so this could be champions and ambassador or MVP programs. Uh, this could be user groups globally in real life and digital. This could be moderators. These could be user advocates. At that point in time, it becomes really, really difficult, not only to manage those through completion, but also to report on the value of those exercises and programs to your executives and other stakeholders that may be providing you resources and budget. Where we're seeing a lot, pretty much, well, even in the CMX study, we saw that 90% of communities are unable to prove out an ROI, or they haven't ne necessarily taken it on yet. Um, we're seeing that across our customer base as well. Um, where companies are looking at, we're taking this investment in community, we're delivering these programs. Now, what does it mean from a business impact perspective? Um, and so we're, we're looking at is how do we connect the two, um, the customer base that you work with, as well as the community interactions and membership. And how we do that is by combining all of these digital and IRL sources, as well as your product data, into a single platform. So Common Room is that platform that brings together all of this data, these members, these activities, adds layers of intelligence on it, which Head On is going to cover in the demo to allow you to make sense of it, to deliver more impactful programs, to prioritize the interactions, activities you have, to triage better and work across teams. And the folks that we're working with to do it really are folks like yourselves. So we work with community leaders and we are built for community leaders and developer relations professionals that have to um, interact with their, not have to, get to interact with their community members and grow their community on a daily basis. So we look at end-to-end -end workflows from welcoming users into your community to understanding who those advocates are, to putting into, into programs, to connecting them with other folks and opportunities within your company, and then for measuring the impact. And now a lot of these communities, because once you start to build a vibrant community, your community team is going to grow and we're built for teams, making it really, really easy for you to collaborate, understand what each of you are working on and to assign tasks and stay on top of a, a wide sprawling community. And then finally, by proving out the value of community, by making it easy to report on community, we're bringing the organization closer to community with the idea of having everybody being a stakeholder and community success. And so now what I'd like to do is pass the ball to Hadan so that she can show you what we're talking about. Thank you everyone for having us yes, having us today. So for our demo today, we're going to be covering some of the use cases that Josh alluded to earlier on in his slides. So what you're seeing here is an instance of Common Room that's been anonymized as Pied Piper for our demo purposes. So a little shout out to um, one of our favorite mythical Silicon Valley companies. And so for the purposes of this demo, I'm logged into Common Room as a developer advocate at an open source software company. And so the first thing I wanted to call out here are the sources here at the bottom left portion of the page. So in this particular community, we've integrated five community sources, and those include examples like GitHub, Stack Overflow, and Slack. So these are essentially the sources that you might frequently see um, within OSS communities. We also recognize that every community has a little bit of a unique flavor and can live in lots of different places. So we don't just integrate with these five sources, we support more than 20 different community sources so that you're able to get that holistic, unified view of your community, no matter what kind of community you are. And so back to the Common Room homepage. So here on the Common Room homepage, you're able to quickly get a pulse of that unified view of your community. You're able to get a sense of where is your community engaging? What are they saying? What is getting buzzed? And how is this week looking in terms of sentiment? 
And so what you're seeing here on the left are some of the trending conversations going on within your community. And we also apply sentiment analysis um, for you throughout the, throughout the week so that you can get a sense of how people are feeling when they're engaging with others within your community. So you can see here that there seems to be a healthy mix of positive and negative sentiment throughout your community this week. And so um, for the first use case, I'm actually going to click into the trending conversations page. Um, and so Josh alluded to this a little bit earlier. He was talking about a community that had 15,000 activities going on in a month and only three community managers. So as a community leader, you know, we're often faced with some of these challenges of limited resources. And yet, you know, this need to stay on top of all the major activities going on within my community, whether that's a post, a reply, or maybe someone who's important talking about something in a conversation that we want to stay on top of. And so the good news is with the trending conversations module, Common Room helps you prioritize which are the activities that are most important to focus on. And so specifically within trending conversations, you get a list of the conversations with the most participants in your community. So these are the conversations that are getting the most buzz. And so um, with this layer of additional intelligence that Common Room applies using artificial intelligence, machine learning, you get some rich contextual information about some of these activities um, that are buzzing within your community. And so you would get an immediate sense just by glancing at a trending conversation um, to understand, hey, who took part in this conversation? You know, who originated the conversation? Who are maybe some of the interesting members within my community who are chiming in and engaging with the person who originally posted? And maybe are we getting support from someone on this team? So it looks like in this case that Evan from our team is already involved here and providing a good level of support throughout this conversation. You're also able to, here on the right-hand side, get a sense of what was being said. Yet, you know, and typically you might just go through and manually read every single uh, comment. Um, and you can see here there are 108 replies, so a lot to go through. So the good news is with Common Room's auto categories as well as sentiment features, you're able to get kind of that summarized view, a high level sense of what happened within the conversation. You know, what are some of those notable events such as bugs or issues or any product questions or complaints that might have occurred throughout the course of this entire more than 100 um, activity conversation? And then here on the left, you're also able to get a sense of the sentiment. You know, how are people feeling throughout the course of the conversation so that I can get a feel for the entire conversation before I go in, perhaps as a community leader, and try to chime in. And so um, the good news is, in addition to having these categories and the sentiment as part of individual activities, um, you also have the ability within Common Room to filter to that. So let's say I want to go in here and filter to all the activities which contain perhaps an allusion to a bug or an issue. I have the ability to filter down my trending conversations. And here, now I'm getting the full subset of all of the activities where a bug or an issue is mentioned. And so that's one way to get to this information, but let's say my team wants to be especially responsive to certain questions, um, certain product questions or bugs or issues, and they wanna be alerted every time a customer answers a product question. And so to accomplish that, Common Room supports the ability to build a team alert. And so I'm gonna go ahead and set up an example of a team alert. So let's say my uh, team wants to be informed every time there is a product question in any of our community sources. So I'm gonna say community-wide and um, go ahead and filter to product question. And so all I have to do here is connect my team's internal Slack channel. And with that, the next time that any of my users asks um, a question within any of my community sources, my team is automatically immediately notified about the question and they are able to go there and very quickly support their customer. So we just went through an overview of perhaps how your team might be able to be really responsive when it comes to activities as well as keep an eye on the activities portion within your community. But what if your team wants to also focus on the users, the members, the VIPs um, within your community? 
And so um, we've heard a lot um, from various community leaders about building champion programs. And so I'm going to go ahead and navigate over to the members page within Common Room to talk about the second use case. And so this use case is all about understanding the notable community, community members that I, as a community leader, need to be, be able to pay attention to so that I'm able to take the right actions to nurture those relationships and um, build kind of this champions program to help further grow my community. So to accomplish this in the common room, I go into the members page. So this page gives me to gives me an overview of all of the different members who are engaging with me um, throughout all of my community channels. And so let's say in this example, I want to build a Pied Piper community uh, VIP program. And so um, I'm gonna go ahead and go into the members page and thinking about you know, this OSS company use case as Pied Piper, um, I don't wanna just put anyone into my um, VIP program. I think of users who are engaging with me perhaps throughout a variety of channels, not just one channel. You know, I don't want people who are simply, you know, uh, posting into GitHub and pull, uh, providing pull requests to me. You know, that's great. But ideally, I want individuals who are contributing to the overall community and enabling others in my community to, community to also contribute. And so I'm going to go in here and actually um, filter a little bit more. And so. I'm going to go ahead and filter perhaps to all of the individuals who were active in both GitHub and Slack. So I'm going to apply the and operator here. And then, you know, thinking about Slack too, you know, there are posts as well as replies. And the signal that I would be wanting to look for here is not only folks who are actively posting on Slack, but folks who might be, you know, pitching in time to help others with their questions um, perhaps in my team Slack. So I'm going to go in here and filter to, filter to um, here, Slack replies. And I'm going to say three Slack replies. And so here by doing this, I'm able to really narrow down my list of members to all of the people who are active in GitHub and Slack and who are actively responding, posting at least three re replies to fellow community members within the Slack channel to make sure that they're supporting um, their fellow community members. And I also, one other criteria I want to apply is to be able to understand, you know, people who are, have been active for a good amount of time and have fairly high activity over time. So. I'm gonna go ahead and, um, and sort this list by activity count. And so in this case, now I'm able to get a list sorted by the people who have had the most activities um, within the criteria I specified. And so now I'm gonna go through and look at potentially good candidates for my VIP program. And so here, um, one person that's jumping out immediately here is Sean Lynch. So it looks like Sean last engaged just a couple of days ago via my Slack channel. So, you know, he is uh, engaging fairly frequently as well as recently. And so I'm going to go ahead and click into Sean Lynch's member profile within Common Room. And so using Sean's member profile, I'm able to get an immediate sense of who is Sean? What is their role? And you know, perhaps any contact information that they're associated with, whether it's a Twitter handle or a LinkedIn profile. And so we recognize that it's sometimes really hard to figure out um, who is posting in what channel and with various handles and various identities. And so within Common Room, we do help you pull together that unified identity across each channel so that you can track a single member like Sean, no matter where they're engaging with you. I can also understand a little bit more about Sean, get a little more context by glancing at their activity history so that if and when I do reach out um, to engage them for the Champions program, I might be able to sprinkle in some of the context in terms of some of his recent activities. And so here at the top of the page, I also wanted to call out um, this little pioneer tag. And so what does pioneer mean in the context of Common Room? Pioneer refers to the very first person in an organization who joined my community. So in this case, Sean is the very first person from the company Pharos who joined, um, to, who joined my community. 
And so for pioneer personas, these are folks who are often early adopters and who might be curious about using the software in general. And so it's critical to engage with them early and make sure that they feel supported early on. And so if an engagement with your pioneer goes well, hopefully your software will be able to spread like wildfire within Sean's company because he's such a fan. And so within Common Room, one quick call out is you're also able to track, you know, a lot of these organizations where your company, where your software is growing like wildfire um, within the organization's fastest growing tab. And so you're able to see um, perhaps from a community or maybe even a sales perspective, where are the areas that we might be wanting to give a little bit more attention to? Who are the organizations that we want to give more attention to? All right, so back to Sean. After reviewing Sean, I decide that he's an awesome fit for our VIP program. So I can go ahead and click add to segment and go ahead and add him to my um, VIP segment here. And maybe I might even leave a note to a fellow teammate to engage Sean first and um, have um, him or her kind of uh, him or her kind of have the initial conversation with Sean before getting Sean added to my champions program. And so if Sean does accept his invite to our champions program, our uh, VIP program, the good news is we can also use Common Room to invite Sean to exclusive MVP events, as well as send him swag and track all of that within the application in order to foster and nurture some of those relationships. So we talk a little bit just now about adding a single person, a single community member to our champions or VIP program. But what if I want to add multiple people from this list to our program? I'm really excited about lots of people on this list. So what I, what I can do here is actually multi-select. So I can select um, Sean, I can select other people. And here at the bottom of the page, all I have to do is click add to segment and then add multiple people to my VIP segment here. And so we alluded to segments a little bit here in terms of adding uh, individuals within my community to my segments. So within the segments page, you can see here that there's now a centralized place to manage lots of these VIPs um, and manage your relationship with, with them too, in terms of having your team track in here um, the status of how you're engaging with each. So have you reached out to them? Maybe you're already waiting for a response. You already reached out and you're waiting for a response. Or maybe you've already successfully um, upgraded them and uh, assigned them to your champion program. So lots of possibilities here. And on top of that, um, it's important we realize to track and see the health of who um, your who your track and um, understand the health of your VIP segment within reporting. So um, I'm going to actually navigate over to reporting and filter to not just not just anyone, not just the holistic community, but as you can see here, I have the ability to filter specifically to my VIP segment so that. I can get a view of how healthy my segments are doing relative to the broader health of the community. And so that takes me to the third use case that we wanted to cover. So with many community first companies, which I'm sure many of you are a part of, um, a common use case that we often hear is around measuring the overall health of, health of the community. And that's not only within just maybe your smaller team of community leaders or developer advocacy teams, but also broadly reporting on this information across the entire organization. And so the metric that we like to use here for that purpose is community responsiveness. And so specifically, um, when someone, maybe a brand new member, maybe an existing member summons up the courage to post something in your community, how quickly does your community respond to that member and really you know, provide that level of support that they need? Um, and that's so important to so many communities. And so many of our customers talk about how their team members might spend several hours a week, maybe doing a lot of manual work to gather a lot of this information across their various sources like Slack and Stack Overflow and normalize all of the data, maybe in a lot of spreadsheets in order to effectively report on the community. And so the good news is with Common Room, you're able to get a lot of this information instantaneously, as you can see here. 
And so within our community responsiveness report, um, you're able to get a sense of overall how responsive is my community. And then on top of that, source by source, perhaps how responsive is my community. And so what we're seeing here is overall a decent response rate across channels. And um, we're also able to get a sense of how long it takes for someone to get a response when they post something. And this is really important, especially in this day and age when lots of people are engaging in a more real-time fashion. We want to make sure that as community leaders, we're striking while the iron is hot and being able to respond to people quickly. So that uh, wraps up the three use cases that, that we uh, we wanted to cover for today with our limited time. Um, it's just a subset of all of the various use cases that are supported within the Common Room application. So if you would like to learn more, definitely feel free to check out our website um, and our user guides. And if you're not there yet, feel free to join our community as well to get to know some of these use cases better. And so with that, thank you for having me. And I will hand it over to Josh and Matthew for the next portion. Thank you, Hedan. Super excited about this conversation. Um, I know we've got limited time, so why don't you start by just telling us about the Webflow community and your role within it? All right. Hey, everyone. Happy to be here to chat with you today. Um, yeah, so Webflow uh, and community. So community has been instrumental um, in Webflow since the very beginning. Um, Vlad and our other co-founders co really um, put an emphasis on feedback and listening to the community. And that kind of foundation of kindness and generosity and really the desire to see everyone succeed was really there at the beginning and that foundation has really just allowed the community to flourish into what it is today um for me my my so i'm a senior product expert at webflow and it, it's it's a bit of an odd title um, so let me kind of explain how i got here um, so I was building freelance websites, building with Webflow and found the community forum. And I started helping others there and just really enjoyed it a lot. Eventually worked up to be a moderator. The opportunity from there um, opened up for me to join as a quality analyst. Now, going from a quality analyst to a product expert, it was more about like, how can I represent and advocate for our community uh, more internally? And, and that's what I transitioned to being a senior product expert. Um, and the thing about our community is we've we formed what we call the education and community team. And it's really community for us is not a sales tactic. It's not a top of the funnel way um, for us to get new customers. It's really about having a journey with our customers, building the product alongside with them um, to their needs. And so this like this, this feedback loop, um, this cycle. And so, so yeah, so our mission is to empower everyone to build for the web. And so we believe that education is the learning component of that. And community is everyone growing together to accomplish this mission and to, to all succeed together. Thank you, Matthew. That uh, I think what exemplifies that most is recently when Webflow announced the community grants program um, mm -hmm. and really investing in it. And we've seen it with working with y'all. What was going on in your community or what challenges were you facing when you started to look at Common Room and ultimately decide to use it? Yeah. So when I first became the, a senior product expert, um, within education and community. My focus was a lot on advocacy, and I didn't know that community tools actually existed or were kind of emerging, uh, an emerging area. And when I found them, I was, I was so happy and so pleasantly surprised. I was like, this is exactly what we need in order to get a holistic view of our community across all the different sources. And you know, when we're interacting uh, with a specific member or a segment, we can really understand um, the sentiment that's there, the activity that's going on without having to monitor 24 seven each individual channel, uh, which is just, it's untenable, right? It's, it's not possible. Um, so just realizing that you know, we have these tools that can assist us um, to get that holistic view was just 
you know, it, it was, it was mind blowing. And still to this day, you know, um, being able to use common room, um, to, to get these views into the community, it's just, um, uh, super empowering for myself and the team. Yeah. It's been amazing just watching your team embrace, not, not necessarily just the tool, but community itself because of the insights that you've been able to share and, and how you've helped us in evolving the tool itself. Mm -hmm. um, now that you have access to common room and many of your peers and stakeholders, what has it unlocked for you and, and specifically Webflow in terms of insights and informing strategy? Yeah. Um, it's, it's knowing about, um, so on a daily basis, um, where and how to engage with the community, uh, being able to go in and see what the trending conversations are, and then quickly get the context around the conversation that's happening, being able to see if there's already um, some team members from Webflow in the conversation, you know, if there are influencers or other people in the conversation, being able to get that at a glance really quickly um, and set that context helps for the daily engagement um, a lot. And then, um, the reporting has really allowed us to to kind of focus in. So before I was I was actually pulling statistics from you know different different channels and manually importing those into Airtable. And I I kind of come to this conclusion that responsiveness is really important for us. And the way I kind of came to this conclusion, you know, I was looking at um, response time and activity levels and doing some math and formulas and trying to to really to get that responsiveness rate because the amount of activity can change week by week, but it's really the rate of response and keeping that kind of baseline steady uh, that we're trying to achieve. It's not it's not the number of activities um, or number of responses. It's about holding that. Um, responsiveness baseline. So previously, yeah, it was a lot of manual um, work to kind of track all this. And now we just, you know, open the reporting dashboard, you know, and it's right there. Um, and and e easy to, to kind of measure and then communicate out to, to the rest of the team or to other teams. Um, yeah, any kind of follow up questions, I guess, on there? Yeah, no, it's uh, it's interesting when I get to work with folks like you, Matthew, just hearing about all the manual calculations, the work that you're doing just to like, keep things running. Um, and that's that's an area and an opportunity for tools like Common Room to come in and help. Where do you see yourself going from here? What what type of um, what type of initiatives? What do you see being unlocked for the rest of the organization or what's what's the future of your community mm -hmm. and using Common Room at Webflow? Yeah. So as we we show the the power of common room and really be able to to extract these kind of insights um, from the community, we're we're seeing you know our success teams being able to identify those those pioneers um, in new companies that are starting to use Webflow, and that's definitely led to some kind of instrumental kind of conversations early on that could could have easily been missed. Um, our our research team is able to take some of the product data. Uh, like we have an open source um, platform called the showcase where people can share their websites. And so the, the research team is able to see those who are sharing sites and then, and then match that with some other criteria and quickly, you know, develop lists of people they can reach out to for that kind of one-on-one -on -one, uh, research. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, uh, oh, oh, go ahead. No, is that good? Uh, it's exciting when like, this has been a data problem for companies like Webflow, um, and other organizations we work for. And a lot of, um, the conversations I'm hearing, especially like at, at the industry events are around, like, how do we make community important to the rest of the company? It seems like you all have figured that out, um, either by exposing the rest of the company and it being in the DNA to support community, but also sharing the data points, sharing the insights and getting folks involved and, and leveraging tools like this. It sounds like. Um, can help to speed up that process and really get everybody um, all rowing in the same direction and working closely with customers. Well, thank you for those insights, Matthew. We're super excited to work with you and the team. Um, you've unlocked a lot for us in terms of understanding what to build and the importance of it and prioritizing it. And so now um, let's open up for questions. All right. Uh, any tips on how to encourage users to actively collaborate in an enthusiastic manner? especially in smaller, newer communities, and especially when the community is around a product that isn't 
intrinsically social. My personal product example is a productivity app, any way to fuel this sort of thing via common room. Um, well, uh, I guess I'll, I'll take that since it's more product specific. Um, there's a couple different things within the product um, for this seeding phase of community. So when you're really starting to drive engagement, you have to get folks there. So you have to have some what's in it for me just to be able to bootstrap a community. Um, what we do to drive early engagement is we've introduced a, a feature called automations. I mentioned that we're really focused on end-to-end -end workflows. So the, the day that Matthew walks into the Uncommon community, how can we make that a really personal, relatively intimate experience for them so they feel valued? And so what Automations does is it allows you to send a DM automatically during a time window you specify to Matthew to say, hey, Matthew, like let me help orient you to the community. Here's what you can expect here. And how can I help with that first interaction? And so Automations is huge. Um, because we found that like some of our customers, and this may even be in our case studies, but are spending as many as two hours a week just welcoming new members into their communities. So that one's really big on driving engagement and personalization at scale. Um, the other thing is as you start to see different types of interactions, it's really important to start to give outlets for those interactions. So if folks are advocating, like Matthew today joined us for this webinar. We've had a great journey together. We've overcome some challenges. We've helped uh, elevate the profile of the community team and the work they're doing at Webflow. So let's do a webinar together. And so using segments and inviting folks to actually share on, um, on the interests of their own, like uh, uh, whether it's like writing content, an interview. We have a Rise of Community series here at Uncommon where we do interviews um, of uh, community leaders. And so there's a lot of different ways, uh, but once people start raising their hand and demonstrating behavior that's closer to the company, it's a great opportunity for you to start to build programs to get them even closer um, and to demonstrate that uh, you appreciate them. Uh, another question just popped up. How many community members can Common Room support? Love these questions because it probably means that there's some big communities out there um, for us, uh, we haven't hit a limit yet. Like we've got multiple communities that are above the 1 million member mark um, across all these different channels. And so when you think about um, scale and community membership, uh, what's interesting about those numbers is more so of how do you make sense of it all? Um, there are technical challenges, of course, um, with larger communities, but really it's around like how do we make sure the signal comes through the noise? And that's really what Common Room was designed to do. It uh, looks like a couple more questions just popped in. Um, and let's pass this one to head on. Is there an API that allows me to bring in additional community members and activity? Yes, I am. I am glad you asked. So Common Room does have an API that allows you to bring in both uh, new and existing members as well as their associated activities. And so um, all you have to do is request access to that from within the platform and we'll grant you with a token and you're able to freely send a variety of different types of com um, community members activities all via API in real time potentially and push it to Common Room to get that unified view. Thanks, Adon. A uh, question just came in around sentiment. So how does sentiment work? Uh, Matthew, uh, you all use sentiment pretty uh, frequently, and we had some great use cases for it at Webflow. Can you go into details about how you use yeah. sentiment? Yeah, the automatic um, kind of sentiment analysis is, is has been a big unlock for us. Um, you know, because before it's just a manual process of like, do you feel like this is is negative or positive or neutral? Um, but having those automatically flagged and being able to go in there ha has been amazing as far as being able to quickly know where is key for us to interact with with the limited time that the team has to get in there. Um, and we've been watching uh, kind of the sentiment sentiment trends over time, and. I'd say about six weeks or so ago, we had an announcement and we knew, you know, there could be anything involving pricing changes, you know, could have some negative sentiment around it. That's fine. We expected that. Um, but when we look back at the, the event, you know, it was handled, you know, we worked with the community. 
when we look back, there was a bump in the uh, sentiment for negative, right, activity, but an equally bump, equal size bump uh, for positive activity. Like, okay, that's interesting. Um, and then recently, even more recent than that, we had another announcement, and this one was about removing a feature. So it's like, you know, we knew it was, it was not going to be received well by those who actually use the feature, but it was necessary to move the product forward. Now, um, it was really easy. We set up alerts, which was really nice. Um, so we had a Slack channel where we were monitoring the negative sentiment to know when we needed to um, get involved into conversations, answer questions. And, you know, it's really easy for the team to feel a little dejected, you know, always dealing with, you know, maybe the negative side of community because that gets, can often be a loud voice, right, in the community. But when I went and looked at the reporting for the sentiment, I noticed that, yes, there was a bump in negative sentiment, but that the positive sentiment was like double the increase of the negative. And I was like, well, this is interesting. So I wonder if the community is having a healthy discourse about this, this topic, and potentially it looks like they're agreeing with us if the positive sentiment was increasing more than the negative. And sure enough, we were able to go and actually pull the social proof that backed up that kind of um, analysis of the data and then share that with uh, leadership and the team making that announcement. It's amazing. Uh, I was a skeptic of sentiment when I joined Common Room. I thought it was amazing <laughs> if it works. Uh, right, yeah. But when I, when I look at like we've done um, community analysis for events um, that our customers have held. So like when you have a user conference and so forth. And using sentiment categorization, um, you'll see like ne uh, positive but bug issue on the same uh, thread, and it'll be absolutely accurate. Um, but what we are really looking for with the sentiment is one, it's like as a community leader, having to subjectively determine what to do with information it becomes a very like big task mentally because you have to decide who does this go to. What should they do with it? How do I present so forth? And the sentiment auto categorization, I've seen how it just, it makes it so much easier to be that triage and to know what to do with it and where it goes. Like we've seen user advocacy programs that have been built off of identifying through sentiment product appreciation and content attached tags. Um, but it's really, really exciting to see that how it's driving like very valuable conversations at Webflow. Let's take one more question. Um, so there's a question around, um, sending emails and interactions within common room. So is there a way to send emails and or export via CSV to our members via common room? So there are ways um, to export. So today from your segments, you can export the, the members that are within your segment. You can also export your reporting details as well. Um, so reports are meant to be shared because it's supposed to drive alignment around the organization. Um, and so within segments, you can export as a CSV and it'll give you all the social handles, any email addresses they provided, organizational data that we've, um, we've been able to procure uh, to help you understand what to do with them. And then you can use your tools for any type of uh, mass campaigns that you're looking for. Hedon, do you wanna add anything to export? Yeah, no, this is uh, this is great. Uh, this this was a great answer, Josh. And on top of that, you know, I think a couple of things. So thinking about, you know, emailing members, that is something that, you know, first of all, from an email perspective, you have the ability to expose email, of course, within the application and of course, copy and, you know, directly email them from external to the application. We are looking at future facing functionality that involves being able to email members in almost like a sort of CRM light fashion as far as engaging community members from within the platform. So stay tuned. We're really, really excited to potentially engage with you on that feature in the future. Uh, whatever, like I love the design team at Common Room. Uh, I never realized how important design was in uh, products like this, but even if you click on an email and a member profile, it automatically copies it for you. So it's just like, <laughs> there's there's way, like we're always thinking about what are the, like the frustrating tasks that community leaders and DevRel have to face and and even the little things, the tool tips, you're gonna love it. Well, Matthew, uh, thank you so much for the time. Thank you everybody in the audience that's joining, asked questions, um, invested their time in their day in learning about Common Room. And uh, we hope to see you in Uncommon, which is our community for um, community leaders in DevRel and also in the product. You can sign up, read our docs and explore it. We're here to help. Thank you so much. <laughs>